there. Are you excited to study with me again? Great! I am Ma'am Carla, not your typical, but your tender loving English teacher broadcaster. Last time, we studied about the different types of sources. Do you still remember them? Okay, tell me, what are they? Great! They are primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. But do you still remember their differences? Okay, prove it. As you can see, we have a pool of words related to the three types of sources here. Let's read them together. We have index, direct, shared, opinion, indirect, personal, authentic, summary, collection, first hand, compilation, and interpretation. All these words are descriptions of primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. Now, I want you to arrange them according to the type where they belong. Identify whether they describe primary, secondary, or tertiary source. Write your answers in a piece of paper. You have 30 seconds to accomplish this activity. Answers. Time to check your work. Let's have primary first. We have direct, personal, authentic, and first hand. For secondary, we have shared, indirect, opinion, and Interpretation. And for tertiary, we have index, summary, collection, and compilation. Did you get them perfectly? Congratulations! A quick recap! Primary sources are materials that provide authentic and first-hand account of events recorded during or shortly after the events described occurred. They are considered direct and personal because the writer saw or experienced the event, read the document, or looked at the actual thing he writes about. While secondary sources are the ones that provide interpretations that were created later by someone who indirectly experience or participate in the events. They provide shared information, discussion, opinion, and or analysis of data. Lastly, tertiary sources are materials that serve as an index, summary, collection, or a compilation of primary and secondary sources. Again, they are primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. They are the three types of sources. As we know, source is anything that informs and provides knowledge. It may be through observations, speeches, documents, pictures, organizations, and others. In using the information gathered, whether it is primary, secondary, 
or tertiary source, it is important that we know how to identify if what we have on hand is a good one. But why is it important? Why do we need to verify information sources? What do you think? Well, it is simply because good information is essential for sustaining effective communication. Let's take getting information about the health and safety protocols from the Department of Health or DOH as an example. We observe the guidelines and measures that they implement like wearing face masks and face shields, sanitizing our hands, and maintaining physical distancing because we think that DOH is a credible source. Through this, we are able to keep ourselves safe and healthy because we follow the regulations that are effectively communicated. To identify if a source is a good one, we have to remember these six characteristics that information should have. Are you excited to learn what they are? Fantastic! Mm -hmm. Grab yourself learning module and pen and paper so we can get started. A quick recap! The first characteristic that a good information should have is accuracy. Accuracy means correct. Information is only useful if it is accurate to a certain level. It means it is reliable, free from flaws, and of high quality. For instance, news reports about the number of COVID-19 cases, recoveries, and deaths should be correct and exact for it to be considered reliable. Of course, getting reliable information in these challenging times could help us take control of the disease, monitor our own progress, and be safe. Again, that is accuracy. Second is completeness. Information should provide all needed details. It should be able to answer the WH questions, such as what, who, when, where, why, and how. Oh, do you still remember their functions? All right, let's review them. What is used to ask questions about people or objects? Like, what academic subject excites you? Mine is none other than English. What about you? Second is who, which is used to ask questions about people. For example, who is the first president of the Philippines? Answer it. Did you say Emilio Aguinaldo? You're right! But when asking about questions related to time, we use when. We could use it to ask about history like, When did Magellan die in the hands of Lapu-Lapu? Correct! Magellan died on April 27, 1521. Another is where, used when asking questions about places. Where is Mayon Volcano located? Excellent! The majestic Mayon Volcano is located in the province of Albay in Bicol region. Why answers questions that ask about reasons and explanations. I want to know, why do you study well? Did I hear you say, to be successful in life? Wow, that's the greatest thing I've heard today. Keep it up and reach your goals. Aja! Last but not the least, how? We use this to get answer to questions about manner, condition, or quality. This commonly means in what way or to what extent. Let's talk about Romeo and Juliet. How did Juliet die? 
he remembered. Juliet died by suicide. She stabbed herself after waking to find Romeo's dead body. Remember, information is considered complete if it answers what, who, when, where, why, and how. Now, imagine winning a concert ticket of your favorite K-pop group. Needless to say, you are extremely excited about it. So you immediately show it to your friends. But when they ask you about the details of the concert, you couldn't give them any because the information in the ticket is incomplete. How would you feel? Disappointed, definitely. That is why completeness of information is a must. Details like title of the concert, name of the K-pop group or performers, date, time and location of the event, and even the price to be paid for the concert must be seen in the ticket to demonstrate the completeness of information. The third characteristic of a good information is timeliness. Information should be up to date. This characteristic could be measured as the time when the information is expected and when it is readily accessible for use. For example, air traffic control needs real-time information on the location and speed of all the aircraft in its airspace. Obviously, it would be extremely dangerous for the airplane if their current location and speed information were delayed by 30 seconds. Same when an entrepreneur asks his sales team to produce a list of the marketable products to be sold in December. Apparently, the data will be useless if it will be submitted in January. Or when you are asked to submit the project as a requirement for the first quarter. What do you think might happen if you submit it on the second quarter? That's how important timeliness is in an information. Fourth is consistency. As defined, consistency refers to the state of reaching a level that does not differ greatly in quality over time. In other words, information should be unchanging for it to be considered useful. This means that there is similarity between perceived information, such as the format, use of terms, acronyms, and abbreviations. Consistency provides comprehension, making it easier for readers to understand where to find and how to interpret difficult information. To achieve consistency of information, we must follow these guidelines. Number one, select the terms you will use and make sure you will use them consistently. For example, the word diagram should be used throughout the material and not later called chart. Number two, follow a standard format for presenting the information. Number three, in using acronym, always write out its in-text reference first, followed by the acronym itself transcribed in letters and enclosed by parentheses. Succeeding references to the acronym can be used only by the letters alone. For example, the Department of Education or DepEd Commit to delivering relevant quality education amidst the pandemic. Hence, DAPID will intensify the use of television and radio-based learning delivery for the upcoming school year. Same with abbreviations. Always follow the procedures of abbreviation used in your field. To ensure consistency in the information, Check if the following questions were answered. Are the terms, 
Acronyms and abbreviations clearly defined and consistently used. Does the information presented follow a consistent format? If the answers are both yeses, then congratulations! The information you have is a good one. Next, we have relevance. Information should suit the demands, needs, and interests of the readers. Meaning, it is fit for the purpose assigned to it. Take note that it doesn't require to be an interesting information as long as it provides direct and essential data to the topic. Remember, not all the information you can gather is worth collecting. So how can we make sure that information is relevant? First, carefully identify the objectives of your information report. And, examine if the information obtained focuses on the identified objectives. Now, listen to the conversation between Ken and Nicole. Hi, Ken. I have heard that you attended Jonah's wedding. Is that true? Yes, Nicole. Wow, that's great. I envy you. I really wanted to go there. So, how was the church wedding ceremony? Um, yes, you miss it. The foods were really tasty and sumptuous. I enjoyed the garlic parmesan wings in garlic dip and fish fillet in sweet and sour sauce. And oh, I think I could still taste the creamy leche plant in my mouth. Oh, that's heaven. Oh, okay. There! Notice how clueless and confused Nicole was when she heard Ken shared about the foods when asked about the wedding ceremony. Keep in mind that it is important that information is relevant and applicable to the situation or problem at hand as it can help solve a problem or provide a solution. Finally, Uniqueness, which is the quality of being special in some ways. Information must be distinct for it to be called useful. It can be more easily adapted if it is visually pleasing. This could be observed on reports that include charts or graphs or figures. It will be briefly detailed attractive to the readers. Think of your math class. When the lesson about polynomial and polynomial equations are discussed only with words, I bet you'll surely cry out to your teacher and ask him to use figures and graphics instead. This explains the importance of distinct presentations of information. Data could be well thought if it is visually unique and attractive to deliver the correct amount of detail. Once more, to know whether the information is a reliable one, it should be accurate, complete, timely, consistent, relevant, unique. Got them? Let's see. Now, I want you to turn your self-learning module on page 6, Learning Task 1. Assess yourself as to how you personally deal with information you encounter. Check the statements that apply to you. I try to determine if the content in an article is worth knowing and relevant. I assess the content through its relatedness and importance in my future goals. I appreciate the content of a text because it fits my plans in life. I evaluate the information presented in every printed material that I read, particularly those which affect my personal views. I compare the information I read to my previous learnings. I value the content in current reading articles because I have experienced that before and I have learned from it. I am affected by personal speeches and discussions as I choose my career goals. I apply what I have learned from articles and discussions in every aspect of my life, making me a better individual. 
How many items did you check? Awesome! Now, you're able to use and evaluate information from news reports, speeches, informative talks, panel discussions, and others in everyday life. Congratulations! You're away to go! Remember, there are various sources of information that you may use in finding significant details and data that can be used in your daily life. And since we are in a world where fake news are everywhere, knowing the characteristics of a good information is a necessity. Information is power! It could either break or make you. A good information could help prevent further complexities and critical situations within an organization. Finally, for your assignment, answer learning task 8 on page 9 of your self-learning module. Learning English may be difficult at first, but if you put your heart in it, you will surely love it. Again, I am Ma'am Carla, heart your service.